Welcome, I'm Lizzie Brooks and this is Lizzie Brooks Yoga and Fitness. Today's class is a workout for people who hate to work out. And to be honest, even as a yoga and fitness teacher, I sometimes only really like the workout after it's done. So living a little bit in the future and seeing how am I gonna feel after this is done? Oh, I'm gonna feel better, I should probably do it. So let's just get it over with. Come and join me on your mat. Okay, so you can do this workout in bare feet or in shoes. It's completely up to you. I prefer barefooted, especially because there is yoga in this. Um, but again, it's your choice. So come and join me, sit up tall and maybe put a blanket or a towel underneath you. That might help the lumbar and the hips feel a little bit better. Hands on the thighs, wherever they're comfortable. Take a deep breath in and a big sigh out. Good. Now inhale, lift both arms up, reach, get really long through the side body. And then like there's a rope and you're pulling yourself up that rope. Start to grab on and then pull down. So it's as if you're really engaging through those muscles. Well, it's not as if you actually are. And then you can start to take the elbows closer in and closer in, so getting into the lats, the shoulders, and the biceps. And now we're gonna let those ropes come to the side. So we're grasping onto those and kind of teeter-tottering through our waistline, laterally, side to side. And then we're gonna hold on one side and put the other hand down. So it doesn't matter which side you're on. Lengthen up through that side body, root the sitting bone down rather than popping the hip up, reach. Inhale here. Exhale, keep reaching, rotate down any amount, reach across the room. Inhale, roll it to the side again. And exhale, go ahead and come up. Put both hands on the legs and roll your shoulders around. So <clears throat> part of exercise is flexibility and getting the heart rate up and getting a little more oxygen through, and that's what we're doing. So this time, reach up and over for the other rope. Put your hand down, and you might be maybe higher up. You don't have to bend that lower elbow. It's totally up to you. Then reach through your fingertips. Take an inhale. Exhale, rotate just a little bit. It doesn't have to be much. Rotate, reach across the room. Rotate back up. Inhale. And then exhale, come up. Hands come down. Roll the shoulders around. It can be forward, back, or alternating. And then shake that all out. Place the hands back down and just look a little left to right. So I don't want this to be like Exorcist where a really old movie reference where the head turns all the way around, not anything I'm into. You want to make it pretty delicate, pretty gentle. And then look down and any amount up. And one more time down and back up. Come to all fours with me. So I would ask that you pad your knees on this, especially if you have tenor kneecaps like I do. And again, you can use a towel or a blanket, whatever you've got. And come to an all fours position. Gently spread your fingers wide. And we're gonna round, make a rainbow with the spine. <laughs> Drape your tailbone down. Let your crown of your head draw down. And then scoop out through the belly as much as you can, opening between the shoulder blades. Now stay there, it's gonna feel weird. That means you're doing it right. Take a deep breath there. And as you exhale, unwind gently into the hips lifting, heart lifting back bend. When you get there, take an inhale and exhale, stay here. Draw to all fours. So you can use the breath however you want. We're just giving you options. Tuck your toes under and lift your hips up and we're gonna go to a downward dog. Now, let's not, let's not freak out. Don't worry about your heels touching at all. Just start to gently bend one knee and the other, opening up and pre preparing the back and the hamstrings for a little more movement. So we wanna be really tender here and let go and release the neck and the jaw. From here, we'll go ahead and lower the knees back down, take that blanket out of the way and come to standing. So however you want to come to standing, I'm going to shift my hips back, put my fingertips down and come into like a little bit of a chair pose and then reach forward and up as I press the feet down 
and reach. Bring the hands to the heart and shake it all out. Okay, we're done. No. <laughs> you could be done, but if you want to add a little more movement today, then continue with me. You've already come this far, you might as well. So take your feet under your hips, excuse me, wider than under your hips, and just bring your hands to your waist and alternately bend one knee and the other. So we're not asking you to take your hips to the ground here. It's just a little side to side, changing up our placement and our movement taking care of the joints. When we exercise, we need to take care of the joints. Okay, and then pause in the center, turn your heels in and your toes out. Roughly, this is 45 degrees. It will depend on your hips. And start to come a little bit up and down with the hips. So we're in a sumo squat here, or a goddess squat, depending on whatever you wanna call it. And you wanna make sure that your kind of the middle of your knee is tracking over roughly your second toe. So you don't want your knees to be kind of rolling in. If that's the case, shorten your stance a little bit. And if you want to stay here, that's just fine. You can even decrease the range of movement. If you want more, you can reach your arms up, okay? So the main thing is to stop freaking out. Sometimes when we do these squats, we're like, oh no, squats. Um, just breathe, that's it. Up and down, either a tiny range of movement or a larger range of movement. We're doing two more, that's it. One and two. And turn your heels straight back, float the arms down, roll the shoulders around, and heel toe the feet in or march the feet in. And we are all going to march now. So just start to lift one knee and the other. Obviously, this is more than work than walking. We're actually lifting the knee higher. You can keep the knee pretty low, or if you want a little more today, let the knee come up, working the hip flexors and the core a little bit more. Stay here or add the arms. You're gonna take alternate elbow to alternate knee, which means opposite sides are going to either hover or if you want more, touch. Everything is about the level that you need it to be if you are losing the breath, go back to a teeny tiny little march, okay? It's still work, it's still kicking up the heart rate, the circulation, all the good things. Three, two, and one. And shake that all out. Come up to the top of your mat, whichever, whichever side you want, and bring your hands to your heart or down by your sides, whatever you like better. Now reach your arms out and up to the sides as you inhale. As you exhale, bring your hands to your heart or your hips and bend the knees into a chair pose. Do that again, inhale, stand up tall, reach. Hands to waist or heart, bend the knees. Just one more, and arms could go forward either, even reach up and bend the knees, hands to heart or waist. Now everyone bring your hands to your waist and step your right leg back. Everyone, everyone that's doing this class with you in your house. I'm used to teaching big classes. And we're in a high lunge. Now this might be a shorter lunge if you're a little off balance or if you don't wanna work the quads as much. Make sure your feet are wide enough left to right that you're not on a tightrope. You wanna make balance a little easier. And we'll do what we did in that horse stance. We will gently take the pelvis higher and then a little lower, a little higher, a little lower, and we're not rushing. If you want more, reach the arms up, and then make cactus arms. Reach the arms up, and then cactus. Three, two, we're slowing down a little bit. Last one. Bring your hands to your hips. Pitch the chest forward, draw your organs towards your spine. Step the back foot forward and come all the way to the stand like you did before. Keep the legs long, bring your hands to your heart or your waist. Find your breath <laughs> and inhale, reach up. Exhale, hands to the heart or the waist. Good, now everyone's hands go to the waist depending on what you, you I can't speak today, you know what I mean. Step the other leg back. <laughs> Find your balance, again, shorten your stance front to back if you need to, and we'll just move up and down in space, working our balance, working our legs, and opening our hips, also strengthening through the glutes. There's a lot going on. 
Maybe reach the arms up if you like. Maybe on that bend of the front knee, taking the elbows to cactus, reaching up on the inhale, cactus on the exhale. One more time, reach up on the inhale, exhale, cactus. Hands to the waist, pitch the chest forward, and it might take a couple steps to take that back foot forward, that's okay. Inhale, arms forward or to the sides, reach up. Exhale, hands to your heart. Okay, so from here, we're gonna come down onto the mat, and again, you might wanna add padding for the knees. We're gonna have an option to lower the knees down as we work through the core and the upper body a little bit more. So first things first, come to your all fours position. Tuck your toes behind you and make sure your heels aren't rolling in or rolling out, but kind of reaching more straight back. You can even kind of look under and through, make sure that's happening. Now, instead of rounding or sagging, kind of like we did in our stretches earlier, we're gonna draw your organs like a shelf of support for your spine. Draw them up and in, not just the belly button point, but more like a diamond all the way from the pubic bone, low ribs to the sternum. Draw that back. Find that support for the lumbar. And maybe you'll stay here and just keeping that support is enough work. It is work for sure. If you want more, lift your knees to hovering. I don't mean up here. I mean hovering right over the mat. And then you can add tiny little movements. Knees go one inch to the sides, one inch in. One inch to the sides, one inch in. <laughs> I know I'm not making you like exercise right now, but this is so impactful for core strength, leg strength, all of that. And then lower the knees and shift back into a child's pose or a second downward facing dog like you did earlier, hips up and back, maybe pedaling. Child's pose, knees can be together or separated, tops of the feet are down, toes are probably touching, and maybe you're coming to your forearms here, you can even stay in all fours if the, that was too, of, too much of an acute angle on your knees. Let's locate our breath. And from here, we'll all join in that downward facing dog position and move it into a plank pose. So take the feet closer together, but they're not touching. Take the shoulders over the wrists. Now for a lot of us, this is a bit too much. So what we're gonna do is keep the knees behind the pelvis and lower those knees onto the blanket. Not sagging, not rounding, nice in between. I would actually ask more of a rounding than dropping the hips. And then from here, if you had to choose, <laughs> and then from here, breathe, either holding the plank or holding the knees down plank. And you can even find a tiny bit of movement or circling. It's more apparent when you're in that full plank. You'll see more movement than when the knees are down. Three, two, one. Downward dog or child's pose. If your wrists are tender, go to that child's pose position. Shake it out a little bit. If you're in that downward facing dog, you might even sway your hips side to side even widening your feet and taking those hips left to right to get into the IT band and the glutes, the structures around the IT band. Let's all join in a, a belly down position. So move your blanket out of the way if you have it and come on down onto the mat. And when you do, go to sleep. <laughs> when you do, take a moment Maybe bend the knees and sway the ankles side to side. Whatever feels good. Release the glutes and the lumbar. We're gonna work on our paraspinal muscles. This is something that we don't normally do in our daily movement. Um, and so it doesn't have to be this huge back bend to be impactful. So take the elbows underneath the shoulders. Fingers are spread gently wide. Instead of thinking about lifting your heart and your eyes way up, roll your shoulder blades onto your back and take the sternum, think about the sternum or your heart center going more forward. You can even peel back as if you're pulling on your mat, pull the hands and the elbows backwards. Tops of your feet are down, not toes tucked. Breathing here, strengthening the back body. And if you have a tendency again to overlift the chin, neutralize that work. Let's take care of the neck. And if you want more tricep work, then imagine that you're holding a block that's the same distance your shoulders are apart in between your elbows and lift the elbows up about half an inch. 
Yes, you might feel this tomorrow. A lot of good tricep work here along with that back. Deep breathing. Lower the elbows if they were lifted and come down and take that rest. Again, you might circle the ankles or go side to side, windshield wipering here. And then for the transition back to a child's pose or downward dog, you are going to choose. So you might just kind of do it however it feels good. If you want more structure in that, you're gonna take that diamond shape we talked about from the sternum to the low ribs to the pubic bone, draw the organs towards the spine. So we're activating through that frontal core and the depth of it. <laughs> Tuck your toes under, draw your elbows back, shoulder blades onto your back, and then lift that um, diamond shape up, root your knees down and press to all fours. That's a big transition. Child's pose or downward facing dog, rolling out the wrist, moving the hips. And we're gonna come into a little bit more cardiovascular work and it's going to be very short. <laughs> so from here, choose how you'd like to come to standing. You might take a little fold, maybe bend the knees and come all the way up. <laughs> okay. so. We're gonna work the brain and the body, so impactful for creating new neuro pathways. So from here, just tap one inner arch and put it down. Tap the other inner arch and down. So again, it's like we did earlier where we were crossing the body, we wanna cross the midline. So tap, down, tap, down. Now, some of us are gonna stay with that because that's already plenty. If you want more, you're gonna add a wide-footed squat in between the taps. Wide-footed squat, tap, Wide-footed squat, tap. Okay, so you can stay with that. <laughs> There's another level. Stay with me, guys. You don't have to do this level. You can stay just with taps, okay? If you want a little more brain work and work that doing things you don't normally do, you'll squat and tap behind you or maybe stand and tap behind you. So we can play with just tapping behind us. It's a way of moving the hip and working the hamstrings and the glutes that we're not used to. How often do we do that, unless we have like gum on our shoe. But usually we would do something in front of us rather than behind. So this is really good for our brains and bodies. Again, so now you might do the squat, cross in front, squat, cross in front, squat, cross in back, squat, cross in back. You get the idea. Let's do one more round. All four of those <laughs> touches and back, squat, and come up and shake that all out. Check in with the jaw. Maybe send the head around in a circle. Roll the shoulders. Make any adjustments to your clothes that were annoying. <laughs> any, anything that was annoying you. And just stand nice and tall. Again, hands can be at the heart, to your sides, or to your waist. And breathe here. Unlock your knee joints. So sometimes when we think we're standing tall, we get more rigid than just tall. So unlock the knee joints, release any gripping in the glutes that might, that might cause some aggravation at the lumbar. And then from here, little twisting. So we're actually doing a twist and a turn. So like you don't have a care in the world, <laughs> right? None of us have a care in the world, right? Um, you're going to lift the opposite heel as you twist to the opposite way. And just let your arms go free with this. We're letting the blood flow go to the tiny little capillaries in the fingertips. Again, just increasing that circulation and doing a movement to this turn that we're probably not used to doing this very often. Okay, and this is gonna take us into our next movement. Now you can get a weight or a cat or a dog or a baby, no, whatever you want in your hands or an invisible something, um, maybe even a block, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that block, we're going to turn a little bit to the side and do a little squat. So my feet are not together. They're kind of staying where they were and I'm just turning to one side and bending the knees. I'm letting my knees and toes point in the same direction, squatting down and then taking it across. So it's almost like we're doing a diagonal like a Bee Gees, right? But we're turning a little bit to the side and then the other side, we're squatting down and taking it diagonally up. Now, if you wanna make this tougher, you're gonna to touch your invisible thing or your real thing down to the ground before you send it diagonally up. 
Let's do one more on this side. And then reach, 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 reach. Point that back toe down and come to center. Okay, so I let you choose, <laughs> I let you choose your side. So the other side might feel more awkward. Totally fine, and that's true for everybody. We have one side that will be easier than the other. So we're going to, again, turn to your other side, do a little squat, your back heel will lift, what becomes your back heel, and then you'll take it up with a little bit of a turn, diagonally up, down, and up. And as you can see, I've decided to bend my elbows, reach that thing down, then in, then up, down, then in, then up. If you wanted to, you could do this whole thing with straight arms or bent arms. It's completely up to you. So don't overthink the movement. It's just as long as you're moving and doing movement that you're not used to, that's where the youthfulness comes in, the strength and the flexibility of mind come in and body. Okay, if you wanna add more, you'll go lower and up, lower. If that bothers your knees, please don't go low and up. Now reach, 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 point the back heel, get long, and then take your thing back to center. And then you don't need it anymore. So place it to the side and shake it off, shake out the legs. And then from here, last cardiovascular work, then we'll come down to the mat, do some stretching, and then guess what? You're done, <laughs> okay? You're in the after workout place, which is a good place to be. So from here, you're either going to march out and march in. So we're taking a wider footed position at the end of that, which works the glutes differently than our regular marching. If you have no low back, no knee, no joint stuff going on, then you can take little hops out and in. If you wanna incorporate the arms, they can go out and in, out and in. If you want huge hops today, you can hop wide and center, but every time you're doing it, you're landing with bent knees. Never land with straight legs. Use the shock absorbers of your body. Three, two, and one. Whew. Bring your hands to your heart. Hope my camera wasn't shaking too bad on that. We're in a rental house and there's a basement underneath, so things are shaking. It's not just a foundation. <laughs> things are shaking. I'm shaking. Are you shaking? Good. You're doing the work. Deep breath in and let it go. All right. Come on down to your mat. This is really important that we give ourselves a hug in, opening up that back body, and then opening up the hip flexors. So keep your right knee in and extend your left leg onto the ground. Press through the heel and the ball joints of the left foot and even spread the toes, opening the arch of the foot. Breathe here, hugging that right knee in. And you can interlace behind the knee, it doesn't have to be in front. Elongate the back of your neck. So if your chin's way up here, either put your blanket underneath or just elongate the back rather than the front. And then switch sides. Left knee in, big extension through the right leg, pressing, letting the front hip get nice and open. This is also great for um, digestion because we're pressing first on the ascending colon and then the descending colon. And actually pressure, like massage, is helpful for moving things along. Both knees come back in, <clears throat> point the ankles, then point the heels. Do that one more time. And we'll just get into the glutes and the back really quickly, bringing the soles of the feet to the floor, about hips distance apart or a little wider. Take your triceps onto the ground. Palms are gonna face. Then press down into the floor and lift your pelvis. It doesn't have to lift very much. And by the way, if you need to walk your feet a little further forward to make the low back feel good and the knees feel okay, absolutely, that's a choice that you can make. Shoulder blades might scoot a little further under the back to get a little more of that back bend if that feels all right. Breathing here. And you can either stay with this or you can take the sitting bones down an inch and up an inch, down, and up. So we're working what's called the posterior chain, which is all of that back body 
so much since our eyes are forward, we are focused on what's happening in front and we tend to work the quads and the front of the core a lot more than what's behind us and we cause imbalances. So this is working that back body. I'm feeling this for sure. Two more times, that's it. It's just two more counts. And one. Lower the hips all the way down. Low back hits the ground gently. Hug the knees in. And then widen the knees and rock a little side to side here. That helps us open the groin too. Bring the legs down. Reach the arms back and stretch and wiggle and get as long as you can. Again, you might point and flex through the ankles. Get the most length you've ever had in your body. Take an inhale through that length and sigh out, let it go. Let everything go totally slack, relaxed. And if this uh, doesn't feel good on the lumbar, bring your feet back in, tuck your tail and let more of the lumbar touch down onto the ground. Breathing here, keeping that heart center open in that passive stretch. Elbows can just drop down however that feels good. So you can take the more cactus, you can reach them further up, whatever feels right. Deepest breath of the day through the nose. Inhale. And sigh through the mouth. <sighs> One more time like that. Inhale through the nose. And sigh out. So in yoga, we take Shavasana, which is the final relaxation pose, where we take a rest on our back. Knees can be bent or not. You might even roll your blanket under your knees. And then we take that moment of pause before we just enter into the rest of our day. So it's like, I like to liken it to an Etch-a-Sketch. If our practice, our yoga practice, was just creating all these lines in our Etch-a-Sketch, then the Shavasana shakes everything out, smooths it over, and we have a blank canvas. Or it's not blank, it's more blank, meaning we've calmed down our nervous systems and we're in more of a settled space to kind of start over. So stay in your resting pose as long as you would like. And I just want to really thank you for showing up and doing a workout when you just didn't want to and you showed up anyway and that's huge my hat is off to you if you got any value to this please share it with your friends who might also not like working out quite as much i know i have plenty of friends who were in that camp and then um maybe hit a like i appreciate your time i appreciate you namaste